Welcome to this free Filmora beginners course. During this fully comprehensive two hour tutorial, you'll be learning all the tools and basics of Wondershare Filmora. If you would like to know everything about using this program like a pro, check us out on skillademia.com and get access to the full course. Now, let's get started. Filmora. This is the page that comes up. We're going to have a quick look at what these are. Currently, I'm using the newest version of Filmora, which is Filmora 11. But if you have the older versions, Filmora 10 or 9, most of these capabilities that we will learn in this course are there. It's just that once you update to the newest version, you're going to get less bugs and you're going to get more tools. So I highly recommend that you guys update your Filmora and keep it up to date so you can get the best out of this program. All right, so what you see here is our library. Uh, this is the first thing that pops up. Let's have a look and see what these things are. So this is where you would create your project. This is a tab that we are in right now. Over here, you would choose your aspect ratio. If you want it for Instagram, 916 for portrait and others. The default would be 16 by 9, which is the landscape shot. It's the same ratio that you would use for videos, unless you're going for something special, like for Instagram. But down here we have some cool stuff, which we'll get into later, but we have auto reframe, auto beat sync, PC screen, and AI portrait. All are very exciting stuff. Down here is the local projects, which are the projects you've made on your computer. Currently, we don't have any. We have instant projects, which is basically where you would take your footage and put them into templates to quickly get the work done. So the stuff you create in instant mode are going to show up here. This is great because they're separate and the projects that you spend more time on and add your own personalized uh, stuff are going to show up in this tab and the stuff that you just want to quickly edit and give out will be in this tab. We have cloud projects. This is this is another cool thing about this version is that your projects can be synced to cloud. So you would have extra space and you can just have your projects and videos in a secure place. You can search for a certain project, you can undo, and you can change the um, layout of your project. So if you have projects here, you can change the way you see them, the grid. This is instant mode, where uh, you can see we have some presets. You can just bring in a bunch of your videos, and all of these sliders and text are going to be there. All you have to do is to put your own videos and just change the text if you want. So you would be saving a lot of time if you just use one of these. We have for business, education, family, vlog, so much more. And you can have a preview and use them. Then finally, we have Creator Academy. This is where you would learn about the uh, stuff Filmora has. So for example, speed ramping, new effect plugins, mask, create a funny baby laser meme video stuff like this. So if you were trying to get new ideas on how to edit your footage, you can come here and learn how to do these really cool things. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump into a project. Up here, we have the cloud, cloud management. This is your account. This is your upgrade. If you wanna to upgrade to the latest version, support center and online help, and then that's just the exit button. Okay, now that we learned about the opening interface, let's create our first project and learn about the editing workspace where we have different tabs and this is where all of your editing will happen. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson where we will learn about this workspace. Let's take a look at the workflow of how you use Filmora to create amazing videos. This is what the workspace looks like. There are different tabs. As you can see, they're labeled. So everything is pretty easy to uh, access. We have our preview bar right here. We have the timeline here and we have the media bar right here, which is the media effects and everything that you will add 
to your footage. So let's start with the first thing, which is your media. Anything you import here is going to show up in your project media. You can make folders if you want. We have a shared media, which you can use in multiple projects. So even after uh, you make a new project, you still have access to the stuff you have in here. And then we have a folder for that too. There are some stuff that Filmora gives you. Some of them are these solid colors. There are gradients too. You can go ahead and download them. You can either click and drag it onto a timeline to download, or you can just hit this little download button. And now you can see it's not there because we have it now. And you can just use these. Maybe put a text on top, a couple of images, anything you want. Then we have sample videos. Uh, we have more stock footage in the stock media, but here you just have some basic sample videos that you can use. We've got some traveling ones, countdown, cherry blossoms, and so much more. Again, you have to download these in order to access them. And the thing about Filmora is that if you want to use all of these cool tools, you got to have internet access. So make sure you're connected to the internet while you're um, using Filmora. We have sample green screens. Got this guy, vintage rim, and explosions, so much more. And then we have the preset templates. These are from the uh, instant mode where, um, let's hit OK and have a look, where Filmora has already created the has already paired the text, the transitions, and the elements. All you have to do is to customize it for yourself. I already downloaded this business intro. I'm going to click and drag it on here. And you can see we have multiple tracks coming from a subscribe element, which looks like this. We have a text and we have this transition, which is in the beginning. Let's have a look. Play this back. That was the transition, the circle thing. And then we have the video underneath. So uh, all I have to do, if I want to quickly do a uh, business intro, I just need to write my maybe company name, put my own video in the back. And it's really easy to change for text. Just double click on the any text that you want. And you're going to be going to the text tab where you get to um, write whatever you want. Let's write Filmora. You can change the font. We'll get into the text tab later, but it's pretty easy to use. Once you're done, hit OK. And now instead of um, business partner, we have Filmora. And to change the footage, let me go to the stock media. That's where I downloaded some things. I'm going to put this tree guy here. Let's get the transition here, delete this guy, and just bring this guy in the beginning. And now instead of that, we have this rainy day. So that's how the presets work. Uh, the templates are pretty easy to use. We have different genres like photography, neon end screen, uh, GTA, travel, and so much more. You can bring in your own. You can also create your own templates. So when uh, you're finished editing, you added your own elements, your own color grading, you can save it as a template. We'll learn about this soon. I'm going to select all of these layers, hit backspace, delete that. And we also have this music. It comes with music too. So that was the uh, media tab. We can make new folders right here in whichever you want. So if I want to make a folder in my project media, I would select it with this. Let's call this my videos. And now it's in the project media. I can delete a folder. So I can just go in here and delete this folder just like that. All right, so let's go to the next slide, which is stock media. But before that, I do want to mention a really cool thing about this program is that it has a built in screen recorder. And that's really cool because if you wanted to maybe show something on this uh, platform or you wanted to show something on your desktop, 
demonstrate it for like an explainer. You can change this, import media files, and you're gonna just leave it be. And then once you hit this, you're going to enter the recording uh, panel where you get to record your screen. Pretty handy. You may want to use this. And we have some filtering options that you can use. Let's move on to the stock media where uh, Filmora brings in media from major platforms like Giphy, Pixabay, and Unsplash onto the program. So that's why you need internet access to get to use these really cool things. So in all of these tabs, we have a favorite tab and a download tab. Your favorites or the ones that you selected this heart icon for is going to be going here. Things that you download by pressing, uh, let me go in one of these, by pressing one of these, this button is going to go in here. So Giphy, as you know, is where you get GIFs and where you get stickers. So you can add this onto your video. Let's go ahead and test that. I got this one from Pixabay. It's the first thing that shows up. And I just downloaded the large. You can see 1920 by 1080. You can download the small too. You get to see the duration, the tags, and the person who uh, took this uh, video. So I'll just add this to my timeline. Let's zoom out of the timeline a bit. And using Giphy, I can maybe add some something to my video. It's going to show up like this. I can rescale it and put it somewhere here. And now I have this GIF of a baby. Just like that, you can't really expand uh, GIFs because they are predetermined. They just loop. So you have that. We also have stickers, uh, which I will add. Let's add this birthday cake. Add it over here. And again, you can resize this, add it to whichever you want, to whatever size you want. You can also stack these guys on top of each other. So I can just bring the first one and bring it on top to have them both playing at the same time. They disappear once they finish. And uh, the options that you have for this, once you double click, are things like the rotation. You can rotate it. You can scale it in or out, which we could already do with the handles here. Change the X and Y position. We have a bunch of more advanced things like motion tracking, chroma key and all, which we'll get into later. But the stuff that are checked are the things that are currently applied to this. So that's transform and compositing. You can change the blending mode if you want. It all depends on your background. You can also change the opacity if it's too vibrant. Same thing goes for, you can double click it here too. Because it's really small here, you can either zoom in or just double click it there. You have the same options for stickers. So you can use uh, stickers and GIFs to maybe add a mood to your video. If you're making a funny clip, these guys can be really handy. Let's select all, hit backspace to delete. Or you can hit this uh, trash icon. So that's the Giphy. You get to search for your favorite thing. Let's search cake and see what stickers we have. Same thing goes for GIFs can see people eating cake because I searched for cake. And if you go over here, we have view options and you can change the view if you want it to be small or large, whichever you want. Now in Pixabay, we have uh, really high quality videos that we can use for our projects. We also have photos. Each of them are labeled as either HD or 4K. So um, you can choose whichever you want. If you want to filter through, you go to resolution and maybe choose HD. So you won't be getting the 4Ks. And the reason why this is here is that this means that this video has a HD option, which is a small one. So um, if you want 1080p, just go for that. If you want uh, 4K, 
only the 4K ones will show because HD is just not 4K. We can search for video type if you're looking for animations like that or if you're looking for actual footage, like real footage. All right, same thing goes for photos. But this time we have orientation, which is uh, whether it's horizontal or vertical. You see, we have the same option here. If you go on the download icon, you can choose the size that you want. We can even see who took this picture and um, maybe you credit them if we plan to share this online. You can filter through the colors if you're looking for black and whites. Just do it here. Transparent are things without a background. And you can go through a certain tone if you're going for cold tones. Maybe look for blue. And we got some nice pictures that we can add. And same thing with Giphy. I can look for a certain thing. Let's search for sun. And I'm going to get anything that has sun in the tag. All right. And then we have Unsplash, which is an open source uh, stock footage platform. It's just photographs. And uh, you can go on them. We don't really have that many options with Unsplash. So if you want high resolution photos, then you can just go over here. Okay. And we don't really have much options except for the view. Let's try searching for some things, which is coin. And see all the stuff that has coins in it. All right. So that was the footage. And we have a favorites tab and a downloads tab. Everything you download will show up here. Everything you favorite will show here. All right, let's go to the audio tab. It's the same thing with stock media, except these are from Filmora. So you can't really get famous artists. These are just some sound effects that Filmora allows you to have. These sounds will go over here. And let's try. You just click and drag and it shows up over here. We'll get into how to use the timeline later. We're just having a look at this. Let's hit backspace or that icon. Over here, we have the same favorites and downloads tab. We have recommended, which you can download. Let's see over here, you can download. We don't really have that many options. They're all just high quality audios that you can add to your project. We have the new stuff and you can search for maybe search for happy and I'm going to get anything with the word happy in it. We can go for sound effects like explosions, mouse click, bells, anything else. Search for footsteps. Let's see. Okay. We don't have a footstep thing, so I would have to import this myself, but here's something that we didn't have in stock media tab and it's the diamond. Anything with a diamond indicates that it's a paid feature. So if I want to use this song, let's drag it over here. I can, I will get something like this so that I can either try it or purchase it right now. And you cannot export without purchasing this item. So anything with the diamond, you need to pay for it backspace. They are categorized uh, for each genre, rock, electronic, travel vlog. We have my music, which is where you would uh, import your own audio. You can go to film stock to get more of these if you're not seeing your preferred audio. And let's go to the next tab, which is the titles tab. Here you get the same thing, except it's text. And a lot of them have motion graphics, which makes it really fun. And it's a nice touch for your videos. Just drag one up here. Everything is click and drag. So it's pretty easy to use. The motion graphic is pretty smooth. Let's play that again. Comes in. And just like the first text, I can double click and add my own stuff. 
the animations will not change. All right, then we have the same categories like what's new, Valentine's Day, and we have things like subtitles, uh, end screens, gaming theme, and there's just so much that you can choose from. Then we have transitions. Transitions connect two footages together and makes it more smooth. You will place them either in between the two footage before or after. And we have paid features and we have free features that don't have that diamond icon. We have to download these. It will go in our downloads tab. And we have so many more options. We have the effects, which are things that go on your full video and you can't really customize them. Uh, they're just kind of overlays. So things like, let's see what we can add. Like this glitch screen roll, if I put it over here, it's going to make my video just move like that. I can't do much with it. I can only change maybe the frequency, make it slower or faster, change the strength, direction, opacity, and stuff like that. All right, so um, these are the basic stuff, but there are elements that you can move around. So for effects, they just go on top of your video and there isn't much you can do with them. Uh, let's try this one, for example. Gonna download it for me. I get something like this. I can't really move this, which isn't that fun. I can only change the opacity. Now, if I want something like this, but I want to change the position, I will have to go to the elements tab. So elements are separate things that you can move around and just make it um, the way you want it. Let's see what we can add. I'll go for an emoji. Okay, let's try this first. Now with this one, I can click it and I can just resize it. Maybe make this tree look like it's alive. So this element in particular is going to move. You can see that it was looking down and then it's going to look up. All right, and if you double click, we have a lot more options compared to effects. We have transform options. I can rotate this, scale this. Compositing, we can make it less uh, visible or change the blending mode. We have other things which we'll learn later. Let's delete this. And these are also categorized, so you can go through each one. And then finally, we have split screen which allows us to put multiple clips at the same time. And uh, we'll learn how to use this, but as you can see, it has a transition for the beginning and the end, and your videos are going to show up at the same time. You can choose the layout and see which one you prefer. And then we have the export button, which you can export things with. All right, and that was the explanation for this tab. And uh, in the next lesson, we're going to learn about the timeline and the preview tab right here. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Okay, so now that we learned about this panel, let's learn about the timeline and the preview panel. So in these two places, you get to edit the stuff that you get from this panel. So it goes one, two, three. You take it from here, you edit here, and you preview here. So that's the workflow. So in the previous lesson, we learned about these little tabs, and I went ahead and downloaded these two footages. I'm going to click and drag it onto my timeline. I'm going to zoom out here, and I'm going to just cut this one by moving the edge right here. Let's get the second video, which we're going to put right next to this guy. I'm going to scroll over and hit this uh, split icon to get rid of the second half. Hit backspace or this icon. All right, so now I have two videos. One is like this, the second is like this. 
Now I want to connect these two together because right after this finishes, it's going to let's hit play. It's going to jump into this and it's just not smooth. Let's go to the transition tab. Look for something basic that can help us with our video. Gonna go for let's have a look. Got a butterfly. I'm going to use this guy, Travel Memories, place it in the middle of my work. There we go. And now I have a nice little transition for my clip. I'm going to add more transition for the beginning and the end. Let's search for something. I'll look for Fade. And we have this guy, Fade to Black. Let's put one in the beginning and one at the end. So that's how transitions work. You can double click on each one, set the duration. I'm going to add one to mine, hit five seconds. And if I want this five second duration to be applied to all of the transitions that I have, I currently have three, I'm going to hit apply all. And now these guys are equally as big as this. You can change the transition mode. Right now it's overlapping on top of the two videos, prefix goes before uh, the second video, postfix goes after the first video. I'm going to keep it on overlap, hit OK once you're finished. So transition wise, we have some good stuff going on here. I'm going to just increase the length of the video because the transitions are longer. I'm going to add a nice effect to my entire clip, my entire uh, video. And that is just some color grading that I can just get a preset for. Go to effects, come down to overlay, actually the LUTs. And you can see we have some pretty cool color gradings. I'm going to go for beautiful memories, drag it on top of my clip. It's going to download it. Let's stretch this out so it can play over all of my videos. And now my video went from, let's turn off the eye icon right here. It went from this to this. And you can with, choose whether you want to show the track, change the visibility, without, with, and you can do this for all of them. For audio, it's mute and unmute. And let's say I don't want any effects done to this video track. So I'm going to reduce the opacity. And I want to make sure that throughout my editing process, I don't accidentally maybe cut this overlay or change these settings. To ensure that that doesn't happen, I will have to lock this track. Now I cannot do anything with it. I can't double click. I can't right click. I can't do anything. So that's how you can make sure your layer stays secure uh, until you unlock that footage. We applied some color grading. Now let's go ahead and add a title. I'm going to go right here. But before we do that, let's add some the bokeh blur. I will go for one of these yellow guys, drag it on top, expand it all the way, just like that. So it's going to show up. I'm going to drag this transition and put it up here instead of the video so I don't suddenly get those effects. It kind of appears with the rest of the videos. There we go. It's a bit laggy because it's red here. And this means that this selection of work is not rendered. Now, when your uh, work isn't rendered, you cannot get a smooth playback. So once you've applied all of the changes, which we haven't yet, you need to render your clips to get a smooth playback or else it's going to be laggy. Like you can see here, it's pretty laggy. But we'll get into that uh, once we've finished adding the stuff we want. Let's double click this effect and just lower the opacity so we get something more natural. 
hit OK. I'm also going to lock this so I don't get anything applied to this track. All right, let's add some text. I'm gonna go to titles. Let's go for some mm, titles. Gonna get something that is suitable. Let's go for let's go for one of these retro things. Drag it on top right after the transition. Increase the time. Go in the middle so you can see the text. Double click. Let's write travel. Going to choose a font that I like. Increase the size. Go for 40. Hit OK. So now this is just going to appear. And it's also going to disappear because these presets have an opening and they have a closing animation too. I'm going to uh, increase the size a bit more so we can see uh, the text closing before we move on to the transition. Let's unlock these two layers and expand them for as long as the video goes. Well, let's select them back. So I have a text, I have color grading, I have a nice overlay, and I have videos. Let's add a nice audio, which we won't hear because um, it will be too loud. But let's just add it so we get a full uh, workflow. I'm going to add this one. Just like that, I can cut this to the end here and drag this little guy at the end to make it fade from this point to this point. The beginning already has some silence, so I'm going to leave that be. So now we have the full effects, and you could add an element. Maybe add like a subscribe button at the end. Let's add this here. You can ask people to subscribe to this travel channel. Let's make it smaller and bring it in the corner. So now we have the full effect. And uh, before we render, let's have a look at some other stuff that we have here and then we can render. When I move through the clips, the preview shows up here and I can also use this to move around. Can play, pause or skip by moving forward. We have the resolution, which is the playback quality. This does not affect the original resolution of your clip. It's just changing the quality of what you see here so that it won't be as laggy. So if you're dealing with a really high quality footage, you want to bring this down so that you don't experience um, delays or lags. Over here, we have markers or marks. With these ones, you can choose a certain part of the entire clip. So maybe I just want to choose this little part. You can do that using these two. This shows me how far along I am in my video. Over here, we have the preview quality and display settings, which allows me to, to experience the maybe zoom levels and the I can change the project aspect ratio if I want. Over here, we have a snapshot, which I can take. Volume, we can change it over here. I'm going to mute mine, bring it all the way down. You can make it full screen. And then down here, we have the, the render preview, which we will be using soon. We have markers, which allows you to make a mark at any point. I'm going to hit M on my keyboard. And now you can see I have this little guy. If I click on it, I will be directed back there. So I can mark a specific part I want. Maybe I want to come back to this part later and add a song. I can use markers to do that. We have a voiceover tool, which allows me to do a voiceover that will go directly onto a new uh, audio track. You can use that. And then we have audio mixer. This tool allows me to um, 
blend and fine tune my audio, especially if you have more than one track for audio, you want to use this tab. We'll get into this later. It is a bit advanced. And then we have this guy, which is to zoom to fit timeline. We're zoomed out right now. So if I click this, it's going to expand it. So it fits my timeline. You can also use these guys to zoom in or zoom out. Over here, it's the audio meter, which is really important because once you play back on your voiceovers or your music, you can see whether your audio has a reasonable volume. If it's too loud, it will reach the red uh, level, which means that you need to lower it. But if it's uh, too low, you will know that you need to make it uh, louder. Then over here, we can see the time indication. And move around these guys. We have the scissor on this guy, which allows us to split. Over here, we have some undo buttons, the trash icon, the split button, which is the same as this, the edit uh, button, which is the same as double clicking. You can use this guy to go in the edit button. Let's see, we get the same stuff as uh, if I were to just double click. All right, is it okay? Click away, we have the silence detection. This is for your audio. It will detect the pauses that you take between each sentence and it will automatically remove those. Once you choose a video, we get extra options like cropping, speed, advanced color tools, which is for color match or color grading, we get a chroma key, which is for green screens. We get a duration tab, which is to change the duration of your footage. This is different from speed. We'll learn more about the difference in the further lessons. And then we get the motion tracking, keyframes. We have the edit that we just learned and the silence detection. So that is the timeline. And then we just have the export button. Okay, now that we know how the timeline works and what the general Filmora workspace looks like, we can now have a look at the footage that we made. So I removed the audio. We muted that anyways. We have two clips, a transition that binds them. We have a color grading tab, a bokeh effect with some fade in, fade out transitions. We have a subscribe animation and a title. So right now, if I were to play this, you can see the line is red. It's going to lag and it will just be really um, rough. I can't see the effects as they are. So in order to see everything in a smoother manner, I need to render my clips. So to render your clips, go at the beginning of your timeline and hit this button. It's going to go over each of the frames that we have. We can see we have a total of 1,397. It tells us the time and you just have to wait until this turns all the way in and you can see that it's starting to turn green and once this whole thing is green we can see our footage so i'm going to let this render and then we'll be back so we can see the video that we made all right now the line is all the way green that means that i can now see my footage in real time let's hit space and got the fade, got the video. Let's close this first. We get our text, which is really slow because we expanded the time. But if you want it to be faster, just make it small like this. It's going to show up like that. Let's have a look at the transition right here. This is what it looks like opens up that way. I'm going to skip to the subscribe uh, element. There is a subscribe element. I brought it in the center and then finally we have a fade. Then it fades to black and we're finished. All right, so we went over some basic things. We know how to make our video fade from black into the video. We know how to add text to our uh, video and then customize the letters. Every um, preset in Filmora comes with an opening and a closing animation. 
we have we added a nice transition between the two clips it's really nice we added this subscribe element subscribe animation like that and then the video fades to black so that's the full workflow of how you can create your own videos you could leave the music in and then fine tune it with this audio mixer but in the following lessons we're going to get into how we can take these tools and use them in the best way possible the best way to learn a program is through practice so make sure you follow along on the lessons I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Let's learn how we can start a project with Filmora, how to import, how to export, and how to save projects. So when you first open the window, you can just hit new project. Uh, let me just make a new project right here. You have some presets for the dimension and the whether you want it to be a square, a, a vertical, video or so on. I'm going to choose this. Let's save the current project and now I'm in my new project. If I want to save this work, just go to file and uh, we need to do something in it first. Let me just add a sample color. Just go ahead and hit save project or control S. You can also hit save project as to change the location of your project because by default they will go in your Filmora folder it's on your computer, but if you want it to be on your desktop or somewhere else, you would have to hit save project as. You can archive your project, save the project as a template, and uh, change the settings. Let's go over here. You can change the resolution if you change your mind about the ratio, the frame rate, the resolution, and all of that. Hit OK once you're finished. And if I want to save this as a template, the templates are over here. Let me just show you guys real quick. So templates are a set of transitions, titles, effects, music, and sometimes me stock media. We will learn more about this soon, but essentially if you want to quickly edit your clip, you would want to consider coming to the templates, getting something that's suitable for your work. Just drag them on top of your, in your timeline. This was the sample color, let's delete it. So as you can see, I have an element for this thing. I have, I think this is the, yeah, that's the frame. We have a sample video, another video and music. So if you wanna quickly get something done, you could come over here and get something related to your clip. And yeah, use any of these. If I have something like this, let me just like, for example, remove the like button. I can go ahead and save this as my template. Okay, so it's been saved and I can find it in the preset templates. Let's hit okay. Right now I have this guy in my preset templates. So you can create your own if you, for example, have a, you've made a custom YouTube end screen for your YouTube channel, you can save it over here and each time put a different photo or a different text. So that's about the file. And we also have something called keyboard shortcuts. These are great. You want to make sure you set yours to your preferred keys and shortcuts. Just click on it. And uh, you can see we have some shortcuts like Control N for new project. And if any of these weren't to your liking, you can go ahead and click on it and then hit the key or the keys that you want as this sh new shortcut. I'm gonna go with Control N. So once you hold down both keys, they will just appear like this. And I do recommend changing something in your tools and that is the Let's see, search for delete, there we go. So by default, your delete should be something else and not backspace. I do recommend using backspace. So just go on it and hit that key because it's a, it's a lot easier when it's this shortcut, but you could add anything you want. So over here, you can just change things to your preference and make your editing experience better. Let's hit okay. 
and let's go to preference real quick. This is related to your program and it's different for everyone. So you may not see the exact same things uh, that you're seeing here. You can change the language interface, change the appearance. If you want dark mode, like this is right now, or the light mode. And you can check for updates, reset all the program warnings and check a few other things. This is where all your downloaded files go and all the other places you can change the location if you want in editing you can you can set your default duration meaning that meaning that when i import a photo and drag it onto my timeline it will be five seconds but if i change it to 10 seconds it will be 10 seconds photo placement is set to fit meaning that what once i drag a photo in here it's going to fit it to the screen that i have let's go to um and the split button on the timeline playhead is this guy. You can uncheck it to get rid of it or just leave it be. We have save, back up my project every five minutes. You can choose a number. Now in performance, you have things for your graphic card and all that. But um, if you saw that your program is running slow, it could be because you have a lot of cache files or files that you do not need, temporary files. So um, you can check this, automatically delete render files when a project file is finished. You can clean it here as well. Uh, I do recommend turning this on, that way your program can run smoother. And I also recommend adding, uh, checking this, automatically delete proxies when a project is closed. And that way you will be saving yourself more storage and your program won't run slow. All right, so those were the preferences. In the edit, we have the basic tools. And in the tools, um, if you select something, you can go to the video, rotate it, go to the audio, color, animation, speed, and all that. We will learn about all of these. In the further lessons, we have view, play, pause, stop, full screen, and that's that. So let's go ahead and export our clip. I will get something else. We just get, I will get another video for this. Let's go to sample video and get something. Let's get this biker. There we go. So let's say this is my video. I'm going to export my clip. So just hit the export button here. Let's look at the options that we have. So local is on your local device. Um, you can choose the format that you're looking for. Normally you would go for MP4. It's the most acceptable video format out there. But if you're exporting for something special, you can get other formats. Uh, like AVI, MOV, MKV, and others. If you want to get music, you can add MP3, save it as a GIF file, and there are plenty of other options. Now, once you've chosen your format, you can come here and name your video, save it to your location, change the resolution of your clip. This is the landscape resolution, the frame rate, it will tell you here, size, duration, auto highlight, it will create an additional highlight video, meaning that, for example, if you have a 20 minute video of a birthday party, uh, turning this on, Filmora will just take the highlighted parts, like when the person's blowing the candle, when there is a lot of movement, and you can choose a preset, whether you want it for TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and others. So let's try this i'm going to turn this on and then we have the upload to cloud which is your cloud storage by default with your subscription you should be getting some storage you can upload this to your cloud if you want to keep this video on another location so i recommend checking this box let's go to device and you can export it to a certain device meaning that this uh, video will be exported for the dimensions of 
whatever device you choose. For example, iPhone, the resolution is this. You can see on local it was something else. If I go for iPod, it will be even smaller. Smart TV will be this. Xbox One, smartphone, other things. You can change the settings too if you want. Quality, go for whichever you prefer. Video, you can choose the encoder. H.264, MP4, GoPro shot. You can adjust the video quality if this is a GoPro video. Ours isn't. Change the resolution, change the frame rate, the bit rate. And as for the audio, you can change the encoder, uh, change the channel and all that. If you're new to this, um, I recommend leaving the default settings that comes with each of these things. If you go for best, the like the bitrate is changing. And yeah, let's hit OK. You can choose the default here as well. But that's if you want to export to a certain device. If you're on local, then you can just leave things be. You can export to YouTube directly. So you would log in here and you can just export this clip and upload it directly onto your YouTube channel. Same thing goes for Vimeo or DVD. We can make a DVD out of this, label it, change the TV standard encoding type, the quality, disk type, capacity, and put it on your output, create image file. That's if you want to get a DVD out of this, not something I want to do. So I'm just going to export this video right now and we will see how it, what it looks like. Let's hit export. Exporting. So it went ahead and opened up the folder by its own and I have a my video highlights clip. Let's open it. So that was my video. It was really short. We didn't really have that much going on. But yeah, so using the settings that I applied, I got this really short clip. All right, so that was how you can import, export, and edit your video throughout your editing process. In the further lessons, we're going to take a deeper look at each of these tabs and the ways that you can make your videos better by adding different techniques. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I will see you in the next one. Hi again. Congratulations on getting this far. I hope you're enjoying the tutorial and already starting to see some awesome results. If you want to check out the extended version of the course, head to skillademia.com where you will find our full Filmora beginner to advanced course with more than 35 lectures and many more projects to complete. Now, let's continue. What is video editing? As the name says, it's when you take raw footage and you edit it by either splitting the clip, adding transitions, putting background music, and so on. And the goal of video editing is to not just put something in front of your audience, is to take those uh, audience on a visual journey. So you want to make sure your music sets the mood, the sound effects aid that emotion, and they trigger the right response from your audience. You want to make sure the color grading and the effects help blend in the uh, footage that you have in your clip. And finally, you want to make sure that your audience is always engaged with what is happening in your video. If you lose your attention, then the video was faulty. Maybe you used something that wasn't suitable. Your music may have been too low. The voiceover was maybe not suitable the effects were not right. And when these little things are faulty, you, you end up losing the attention of your audience. So let's talk about what makes a good video. Obviously, you would need a footage like these and you would need to have a story for this. You want to composite the storyline. So if this guy is just walking in the forest, I cannot just give this to my audience. There's no music, there's no sound effects, and it's like I'm looking at a blank canvas. 
Sure, there is something in there and I can just stare at it, but it won't keep my attention. If this was social media, I would just skip over because there's nothing grabbing my attention. There is no, uh, like we said, no music, no sound effect, no text on the screen, no transitions. And this video alone will not grab my attention for a long time. So apart from your clip, which you want to make sure is a good quality clip, the color grading is nice, the colors are vibrant, there's enough light. Apart from your video, you want good music. Now good music, just like video, has to have a good quality. You want to make sure the volume is enough, it's not too loud or it's not too low. You want to make sure the music suits what's happening in this um, video. I cannot put rock music with this clip because it's a slow motion of this guy just walking his dog in a really beautiful forest that's all white from the snow. So putting rock music will uh, kind of disturb the audience because they're seeing this clip and they're starting to imagine being in that setting and then I'm just triggering a lot of other emotions with the rock music and it's just not colliding with the video that they're seeing. Uh, but if I did have something intense like this boxing video, putting rock music is okay because when I look at this, I'm also getting excited. Will he miss the punches? What's going to happen? Is he getting stronger? So when I'm looking at this, I'm excited. I want to know what's happening. What is he training for? Is he good at his training? Is, the, is he able to throw the punch as well? Putting rock music or a fast beat music is suitable for this. On the other hand, I cannot put a slow piano music over this footage because it's an intense scene. So putting a slow, peaceful piano music over this video will not do it either because the video is telling me to be pumped and be excited, but the music is telling me to feel peace and calm down. So your music and the way it affects your video is really important. You want to make sure it suits what the audience is seeing. So apart from video and music, let's talk about audio design. So audio design is when you use different sound effects to set the mood and make the audience feel a more realistic scene. For example, in this video where we have this boxing training scene, you got to think about what sounds you would hear if you were in that exact same room. So first of all, you would hear maybe grunting sounds because they're training hard. Second sound is the impact between the glove and the mitt would have some sort of a plastic sound. And third of all, maybe some quick breaths because they're punching quite fast. You want to add that in there. And fourth of all, maybe some background music because there are people in the back too. So apart from your music, it's really important to use audio design to make your uh, videos more professional. We will talk more about audio design and how you can use it in your clips in further lessons, but just know that it's a big deal and you simply cannot skip over audio design if you're going for a professional video. And on the other hand, in this example, audio design would be um, the sound of the guy taking a step in the snow and if maybe the dog is barking, I don't think the dog is, but if the dog was barking, you would add it in there. And maybe you would add some um, bird noises in the air, some wind sounds, and it all depends on what's in the, um, the video. And always think that what you would hear if you were in that exact same setting. Okay, so that was video. Number one was video, music, audio design, the third thing is the transitions. Now transitions are, as the name says, the way that you go from video A to video B. Without transitions, you would suddenly just, the screen would just suddenly change to the next clip. But with a transition, which uh, you would find in this tab, you are animating the way the first video goes on to the second video. So let me just put this guy here, render our clip, and 
Transitions also can affect the way the audience feels towards your clip and we're going to go over some examples. But right now I just added an erase transition. So my video is just going to erase away for the second video. So as you can see, I added an animation to move from my first clip to the second clip. You have animations where you get minimal movement like um, let's go here, maybe dissolve. You can see when you go in, go on it with your mouse, you see a preview. Dissolve, fade to black, fade to white. Maybe you linear wipe. Things that are just really gentle. These are gentle transitions. On the other hand, we have, we have transitions that have a lot more action. For example, speed blurs. Let's look for an example. Let's go for blurry roll. I go on it, you can see that there's a lot going on before we get to the second video. And I'll attempt to put it on this guy. Let me get rid of the rest. So we only work with a tiny bit. Render our clip, play that back. So as you can see, we went through many uh, animations before we reach the second video. And when you have more action in your transitions, you're also creating excitement for your audience. If you've seen uh, on social media where they take popular shows or movies and they put like a really upbeat music with a lot of transitions, with a lot of flashes in the video, those are those videos are really triggering your excitement and you feel a certain uh, energy when you look at them because there's so much going on and your eyes are just traveling from one side to the other and those videos are meant to make you excited and pumped when you look at them. But on the other hand when we have peaceful videos like this one you don't really want to add like a you don't really want to add maybe a 3D effect or some other like a glitch effect and all that because you're taking away from that peaceful vibe that you created. So when it comes to peaceful videos, you don't want to use intense transitions. You want to stick with the basics. A lot of times they don't even use transitions on peaceful videos and it just cuts to the second clip. But of course the scenes need to be similar. So maybe it would be something like this where we have nature and then it moves on to another nature. A transition suitable for this peaceful sequence would be maybe a dissolve. Let's cut that, render our clip. It would be something like this. So it just dissolves into the second video. It was a really gentle transition and it perfectly suited this peaceful clips, these two peaceful clips. But if we had a intense sequence where we have like a fight scene here, let's get this soccer video. So we have a lot of actions in these. This car would be more suitable. Remove the audio. So we have two intense actions. Both actions are meant to make the audience pumped. These are sports and they are exciting things. Let's go to transitions. So for something like this, you could use intense transitions like a blurry roll, maybe. a um, Let's try this transition instead. Render my clip. So something like this is suitable for intense actions, especially if you're dealing with um, an intense music in the back. You could always just come and make the transitions shorter or faster. We will learn more about this in other lessons. Let's just make that a little faster. It was a bit too slow. Okay, so with something like this, you can even go for something faster. But fast animations and fast videos like these two, they go well together. Slow videos like this and this go for uh, would uh, would need some slow transitions, slow and gentle transitions. 
So that's transitions. And then we have effects. A lot of times you do have scenes, but uh, you would want to add a few things on it to set the mood. So I have this, um, this beach uh, video. I could add maybe some fog in the back to make it mysterious. Maybe add some, um, I can make it look as if it was raining add certain overlays and so much more. Let's go in overlays. So maybe I can add a frame, light leaks like these. So I can use effects to either manipulate the scene that I'm, uh, I have, make it look as if it was a stormy day or uh, just do anything else I can change the scene. You can get these stuff from the effects panel or if you're going for like a supernatural video you could use this stuff in the elements tab to add some we effects like fire explosions and so on all right so those were the principles now there may be times where you're just um, trying to add a bunch of videos together to create a montage or just a process video. So that's where the split screen comes in handy. You, you could just use any other thing, but split screens are a great way to show that um, multiple things are happening at the same time. For example, you're showing how you ended up making a lasagna. You could have videos of yourself maybe boiling the pasta, making the sauce in the second slide, uh, baking it and then serving it. So multiple things are happening at the same time, but they are all related. So that way you can use split screens to show the stuff that's happening at the same time. Let's add the split screen right here. And this is how it works. Just take your videos and drag them onto each of the numbers. So that's number one. Number two, I'm going to get things that are related to nature. Let's see if I have some. Here we go. Third one and fourth one. So now I have a lot of things happening at the same time. Let me get this here. Render my clip. So now let's play this back. I can use this to show maybe my memories from a certain trip and have the videos that I took in that trip all um, have them all play at the same time. You can just uh, increase this if it's too fast. There are different options right here, different split screens. If you bring your cursor over them, you see a preview of how they function. Let's go ahead and delete that. So those are the things that contribute to a good video. It's the video, the music, audio design, transitions, and extra effects. When all of these things come together, you are making a good video. And you want to make sure that you put enough time on each of these principles, making sure that you got the right music, the right transition to set the final mood that you want your audience to have and the emotion you want them to take from your clip. So in the further lessons, we're going to learn about these emotions and how we can contribute to adding a certain emotion to your clip. How we can use, for example, color grading to make a video appear more sad or use color grading to make a video appear more happy. We're going to learn this through examples so make sure you follow along and test out these techniques with your clips or the clips that you can get from stock media and see how you can use these techniques to add a certain emotion or mood to your videos. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to learn about one of the most important things of video editing and that is audio design. So audio design is when you take different sound effects and combine it with your clip and music to create a more realistic scene. These sound effects can be something as simple as walking sounds, bird noises, wind sounds, and all that. And when you include audio design on your clip, not only are you setting yourself apart from amateur video editors, 
but you're also making your scene more interesting for your audience. People will be more drawn into it because it feels as if they're in that clip and um, they're in that moment, in that forest, swimming under the water, whatever the clip has. You're going to make your clip more acceptable to your viewer's eyes. In the further lessons, you're going to learn uh, how to exactly achieve audio design. Uh, I went ahead and made this clip. We will learn about how to make this clip in another lesson. I just wanted to show you guys an example of audio design. So let me just unmute these. As you can see, this is my clip and I have five tracks. Keep in mind that audio design, it's not just putting a music for your clip. It goes way beyond that. Sometimes you have more than five tracks. A lot of times you may have to deal with 20 tracks or even more. It all depends on the clip that you have and the amount of noise and sound effects it needs. When you're going to design the audio in your clip, you will be mostly dealing with the audio mixer right here. It's a different uh, tab and we will learn how to use this in further lessons, but this is where you would uh, do most of your work or you would just go in the individual edit settings and deal with each one yourself. But let's take a look at how audio design can change a clip. So I've got my clip. I'm just going to mute all the other tracks and just have a music playing in the background. Let's have a listen. So as you can see, it's just a uh, peaceful music in the back. We got some slow motion videos too, so it goes well. Now, not, I'm not saying that this is not acceptable. You will see a lot of people do this, but uh, designing the audio and adding sound effects really helps to create a different mood for your clip. Right now, this looks like a maybe montage, and uh, we are going to add four more uh, tracks to it. I'm going to go over each one. Let's start by analyzing our clip. What's in this clip? We have some children just sitting on this wood and they're just moving their legs. It has a nostalgic feeling. In the back we have the beach. We have people walking and up there maybe there's some seagulls. And uh, a lot of times you may not see the thing that needs sound effect. For example, I'm not seeing the seagulls. But all of us know that once we go to the beach, hearing seagulls is not an unnatural thing. And it just they are present at the beach. So I will add seagulls to make it more realistic. So let's go ahead and add one audio track. And this is Wind by the Sea. Wind by the Sea. Let's have a listen. I'm going to increase my audio. All right, as you can see, it's a lot more acceptable because we have that peaceful uh, wave sounds in the back and we have this peaceful music. So together they make a really good scene. But we can go a step further. I've applied a people talking at cafe ambience or just people talking in the distance because we do have a lot of people in the back and in the front. Let's go ahead and unmute this and listen. All right, so we have people talking and seeing how many people they are, I can make the I can make it look as if this beach was crowded and apart from these people that we see, there are people all around and their voices are as we hear. I'm going to add another track for the seagulls. Play that back. Thank you. 
So as you can hear, there are plenty of noises coming, but they're all related to one another. And it's that nostalgic scene of going to the beach as kids. I'm going to assume these are kids. And all of these sound effects are familiar noises, meaning that they're not going to um, disturb the ear. And once combined with the right music and the right scene, I can create a peaceful mood for my clip. This is optional, but adding a voiceover over your peaceful clips can help set the mood. I got this from Freesound. It's uh, someone telling a story about Paris. It's about Paris. We can assume that this is somewhere in Paris just for the sake of this video. Let's unmute this and have a listen. How everything started. I remember the people and the smell. Even if it's a little blurry, I remember it was Paris. It was the middle of the 70s. I remember the sound of the accordion and the words. All right, so I've combined five different audio tracks to create this scene which when combined with the story makes it look as if this is the scene from this guy's story. So this is indeed Paris and it was the early 70s, like the guy was saying in the audio. And uh, I've paired this with some color grading to make it look as if it's this guy's memory. So when audio design, color grading, speed and um, transitions, when they all come together, you get the best result from your video editing. All right, so we've made this, but uh, when you first import your audio, they're all at one rate. We would need to go to Audio Mixer. And I went ahead and edited this. You can see some are loud, some are lowered. And I've done this to prioritize an audio over the others. So audio five was my storytelling. It's the highest because the priority is the guy telling the story. And then comes the sound effects and then the music. We also have other stuff here. We will learn more about audio mixer in another lesson. But this is just how important it is to uh, add audio design to your clips. All right, so we had this. Let me just go ahead and delete this. So I went ahead and downloaded some things that can be used together to create a nice little clip. This is my clip right here. This guy is just hiking through the woods and the camera is following our subject. So this uh, video doesn't have any audio. If I play it back, there's nothing. When I look at this clip as the audience, I'm not feeling anything because there's nothing going on. None of my senses are triggered. I don't know what's the story and why this guy is going for a hike. And I can fix that using audio design. So let's look at the sounds that we have for this clip. You can go ahead and get more from the audio tab. But uh, we have, I'm going to get the first one, bird whistling. Add that underneath, play that back. So that alone creates a peaceful environment because of all the, the soft wind in the back and the birds chirping. That creates a peaceful scene for my subject. And now as the audience, I know that this is nature and I'm feeling closer to the environment that's in the clip just by simply bringing this in. Now we need to, let's cut the audio so it fits the clip let's get the next sound and that is walking on the leaves so there are leaves and every time you take a step on dry leaves or wet ones there is a sound and i can see that as the editor and i need to add that to my clip so let's add the walk on leaf sound i'm gonna cut the first silent part have a listen so as you can see it's even better because we can hear each of this guy's steps 
Now don't worry about the volume, we will fix that later. That was walking on leaves. Let's get another sound, which is wind in the forest with crows. So this audio is pretty low. I'm just going to drag this guy here, add to the volume, be a little bit less. Let's have a listen. All right, so that sounds so much better. Now you could go ahead and add some music in the back. I'm just going to leave it be as it is. But now here's the problem with audio design. You can't just leave it here when everything is loud at the same rate and uh, it's not balanced. It's like having multiple colors on one screen and you haven't balanced them out. And it's kind of difficult for the eyes to follow. The same thing goes for the ear when you have multiple sounds playing at the same uh, decibel you're going to make it difficult for the audience to follow those sounds. They don't know what they're listening to first and what the other sounds are trying to send as a message. So that is why we will have to go to audio design. I'm just going to fix these with the audio mixer and then I'll be back. I'm not going to show you guys now because it's a bit too early, but in the further lessons, we will learn how to fix the audio. So I went ahead and adjusted the audios with my audio mixer. Let's have a look at our final product. So as you can see, it's a lot more balanced now. The priority is the uh, foot walking on the leaves because we're focused on that subject in the video. If we didn't have a subject in the clip and it was just the trees, then adding to the volume for the bird audio is a good idea. But right now the focus should be on our subject. So the only sound that the subject would be making is him taking steps on the leaves. So that's what audio design is. Like we said, you could add even more tracks or stick with a few like we are now. If you want to get your own audios, you can go to the audio tab. There's already some environmental sound effects like wind by the sea, thunder before the rain, and so much more. If you want to get more, just go to filmstock.com and you can get plenty more of audios for your clip. Just remember that you need to first analyze your clip and find the stuff that needs audio. If you have a superhero fight and the guy is shooting lasers, you need to put in the, the lasers, the epic music, and the grunt sounds or the screams or whatever they have in there. And of course, if there's any punches or impact with the other opponent, you need to add that sound effect too. Remember that the more sound effects you have, the more triggered and invested the audience are. So that is why for action movies or for intense fight scenes, there's always a lot of sound effects and that just keeps the audience eyes on the screen because they're just hearing random things and they're trying to, they're excited to see what happens next. But with peaceful videos like this one, you just want to add the things that are in the clip and you don't want to overdo it or have the audios be a little too loud or too low. And having a balanced audio design is really important. Again, you want to make sure that you have the right amount, not too much and not too little. Now that you know what audio design is and how you can um, make it happen, we're going to uh, take a look at how you can design your own clips like we did right here with the audio mixer, the audio settings for each track, and additional audio effects that Filmora has to offer. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I will see you in the next one. Let's learn about a really important part of video editing, which is color grading. Now we're going to learn about color grading, color correction, the moods that are created using those two techniques, and how you can change the tone and the mood of your clips with an example. So let's learn about the difference between color grading and color correction. They both use the 
term color in them, but they're quite different from one another. And it's important to know the difference and uh, know which one you need to use to make your clips look more professional. So with color correction, you're fixing the lighting of your work. You're making sure that your video is has enough light, the exposure is right, and everything is okay in it. I just went ahead and I'm just gonna bring in this video. Okay, so take a look at this clip. Immediately you can notice that it's a bit too dark for a sunny uh, setting that we see here. The water is a bit, um, kind of has a grayish blue color and the sand is gray too. This is where color correction comes into play. Before you move on to color grading, you need to color correct your work. So let's go in the clip and see how color correction works in Filmora. Just go over here, color correction. So let's move to the adjust tab right here. The first thing you see is the histogram. Now the histogram is a visual representation of the dark tones, mid tones, and the highlights. So the brightest points will be over here and the, the darkest ones will be over here. And the stuff in the middle are the mid-tones. Notice how all of the channels are in the middle and that is because our video is very flat. We can barely differentiate the highlights and the shadows. So that's why everything is in the middle. And if I were to just, let me just go to color and to light actually and darken the shadows. Notice how everything shifts to the left. This is before, this is after. Everything is moving to the left because I'm adding more shadows to my clip. Same thing goes for the opposite. Let me get the highlights. If I move them to the right, all of these guys move to the right too because I've just brightened up those channels. The goal here is to create a balance between the highlights, the shadows, and the midtones. You don't want your footage to be too flat or too intense, and it's really important to make sure your color correction is on point. So let me just reset what we did here and take a look at the tabs one by one. So the first thing is color enhancement. We will get an in-depth tutorial about color correction and color grading. I just want to go ahead and show you guys real quick what contributes to color correction and what contributes to color grading. The first tab is color enhancement. As the name says, it just automatically enhances the colors. Notice how this guy changed. This was before. This is after, we have a lot of peaks and this is actually not giving us a good result. So you could either play around with the values and see which one works best for you, but I do recommend using the other tabs rather than the color enhancement. So let's open white balance. We have temperature and tint. Now these two are things that um, can change the mood of your clip. I'm gonna get into the moods in a second, but Essentially, with temperature, you get to make your clip colder or warmer. This can change your mood quite a lot. We also have the same thing for tint, more to the magenta side and more to the green side. So for my clip, I want to, I'm going for a sunny vacation mood, so I will be needing something warm. Remember that warm colors represent friendly environments and happy moments. So if you have a wedding video where the bride and groom are really happy, you want to make sure you add some warmth to that clip and that way you can enhance the happiness and joy in that clip. The exact opposite is blue or cold tones. When you add cold tones to your video, you're creating a sense of sadness or maybe a serious mood. So if your characters in the video are having a serious conversation, you want to add some cold tones to make the scene more intense and have the audience get in a serious mood because they're having a serious conversation. So for this clip, I want something happy. So I will be moving my slider to the right. As for tint, 
Uh, it depends on your clip. If your video is a bit too purple, you can move it to the uh, green side. That's what I want to do because I want some nice cyan in my water. Just bring it to the left. Then we have 3D LUTs. These are just some presets for you to quickly give a mood to your clip. This counts for color grading. If I just go in like Batman, you can see how I made everything green. This right now is a serious um, mood because it, we have cold tones. We have blues, we have greens. These colors are pretty common in horror films, action films, and sad films. So um, it's not really suitable for our happy vacation video, but there are plenty of others. You can also import your own that imports files that you downloaded from the internet. Let's go for go for warm film. So you can add warm film. It's not really I'm not really liking that. So I'm just going to delete this and make my own. Let's hit this and do the uh, selection and then I'll just do what I did before. There we go. Let's skip to color. This is where you are going to color correct your work. Essentially, you want to make sure that the lightness or the exposure of your video is right. It's not too dark or too light. You want to make sure that the colors are there. And we're, you can just use these guys to fix your clip. I'm going to add some exposure to my video. Add some vibrance. A little bit of saturation. Let's add some contrast. And add some brightness. So this was without the color tab. This is after the color tab. So what we did right now was to increase the exposure, which is the overall brightness, regardless of whether it's the shadows or the highlights. We just apply 10 points to that. Brightness focuses on the bright parts and just increases the overall brightness. Added about eight. Contrast separates and sets apart the highlights and the shadows. So we added quite a lot of that. If we go the opposite way for contrast, you're going to get a flat video. So um, you want to add a good amount, not too much either. It's going to look like this. Somewhere around here. Then we get two options for color. We have one that's vibrance and one is for saturation. It's really important to know the difference. Vibrance targets the colors that wouldn't be that saturated in the first place. For our case, that's the sand. You don't really get that much color from here. Saturation goes for the intensity of the colors. So right now I was able to bring out a lot of color from the sand. This was before, you can see it's gray. This is after. So if you have uh, certain colors in your clip that aren't that colorful, like if you have a concrete wall or sand like this, you want to add vibrance to your clip. And then we have saturation, which I will use to intensify the beautiful blue that we have in this clip. Let's increase that. And there we go. Saturation does also affect this, but without vibrance, not so much. You can see we still have that gray sand. Let's bring that back. So now we have successfully color corrected our clip. Everything is visible. The colors are intense for us to see them and the lighting is perfect too. Um, there's also this light tab where you get to further work with the different parts of the clip. So highlights, which are the brightest parts. It's mostly the sand. So you can just add some to that. We have the opposite, which is the shadows. That would mostly be the water and the the ones in the corner. You can see it's getting dark. I'm going to darken those shadows because I want more color from the water. The white goes for the areas that should be pure white. 
So um, we don't have that much, but it just targets things that have white in them. And let's say if you have a white house, you want to make sure you use this white tab and make sure the color is pure white and not a grayish color or a light blue color. We will learn more about this in further lessons. Just increase the whites. Let's also decrease the blacks. So I get more dimension in the water. All right, so now we are done with the color correction. Now the moment where you start color grading is when you start to manipulate the stuff you have in your clip. So that means that um, if my clip was like this, this was my original clip. If I take the coldness out, maybe it was a cloudy day and we weren't getting any sun. If I take out the coldness by adding warmth in this color grading tab, I'm manipulating the original setting of this video because it wasn't a sunny day and I'm just making it look as if it was. I have just manipulated the video to create a certain mood. Let's move to HSL. This is also where you color grade your clip. HSL stands for, let's open it, hue, saturation, and luminance. You get different colors and just go on each one and you get to change each of these settings for them. So you wanna take a look at the colors that you have in your clip. For our case, it's orange and blue. We don't really have greens or um, purples. So let me just go over here. Hue, you're changing the original color. So if I have uh, this sand color, I can manipulate that original color and make it purple or make it green. So you can see how I've just changed the original color completely by moving this slider. I'm not going to touch the hue because sand is this color and not purple. Saturation, as we learned before, is for the intensity of this particular color. So if I remove it all the way, I get gray. But if I add it all the way, I get a really intense, I intensify the color that the original video had. I want to add this for maybe around um, 50 points. Luminance is the brightness of that color. If you remove from the luminance, you're making that color darker. If you add to it, you're making it brighter which does end up blowing out the color as well. You can see we got a gray again. So you don't want to work with this too much. Just go somewhere around here. There we go. Let's go with the blue. Same thing for the blue. I can manipulate it to make it look kind of a swampy color. I can give it that, make it purple. I do want to bring it to the green side because I'm trying to make a cyan water. And as for saturation, we want to increase that. Luminance, let's increase as well. I'm going to do the same thing with this other blue. Just work with that. Let me just go over here and okay, remove the saturation and the luminance. So this was color grading. Uh, just like a little bit of color grading. I manipulated my colors. This was the before. This is the after. You can see how different it looks. And let's move on to the final tab, which is vignetting. In vignetting, you get to darken or lighten the corners of your clip. So if you add it here, it's bright. Put it here, it's dark. Get to change the size and roundness. We'll get into this later. I will not be using this slider for my video. And let's hit OK. All right. So that was a quick explanation of color correction and color grading. Like we said, we're going to learn about the exact ways that you can do this in further lessons. In the next lesson, we're going to learn about moods and how different colors that you use in color grading can change the mood and the tone of your uh, clip 
and therefore the emotion of your audience. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn about mood and tone using color. So in the previous lesson, we learned how to color correct and color grade our clips, making it perfect for a certain mood or tone. Now let's learn about how colors affect that mood or tone and what emotion people will get from that color grading. I will use this clip right here as my example. It's a person just standing there and their back is to us. And I can easily use color grading to make this video either sad or happy. So let's go ahead and jump into the color correction tab. Okay, I'll go to adjust. Let's come down to white balance. So in the previous lesson, we mentioned that colder tones create a sad and serious mood, while warmer tones create a joyful and happy mood. It could also be used in nostalgic um, clips. So whether you go to the warm tones or the cold tones, uh, it really depends on the mood that you're trying to create for your audience. What emotion should they feel? If they're looking at this girl right now, should they feel bad for her or should they feel happy for her? You decide that with your color grading. If I make this blue, I'm creating a sad mood, meaning that I want the people who see this clip to feel bad for this character. Maybe something bad happened and she's just upset about something. I can trigger empathy with my color grading. In this case, if it's sad, people will feel bad for her or maybe relate to her situation. But if I make it warm it's almost like a memory like maybe she is enjoying where she is she's admiring the view she feels at peace and i can create that peaceful feeling for the audience too and make them feel at peace as well knowing that this girl is just admiring where she is she's maybe grateful for something that happened maybe she's thinking about her family and just by moving a few sliders i can or you can, as the editor, trigger these emotions in your audience. So let's just undo this. The same thing goes for tint. Like we said that um, when you combine colder tones, you create a different mood. Usually in horror films, you notice that there's always green tones and blue tones. You're not only creating something sad, but you're also creating something creepy, which is why horror films use these two colors together a lot. Apart from that, they use harsh shadows. Uh, let's try to add some harsh shadows. They add some harsh shadows and immediately you can see that this is close to a scene from a horror film. Everything is dark, everything is blue, and we have a green uh, tone to our clip. So I just turned this video of the girl just let's undo these turn it off of this girl just standing there in the field and I turned it into something creepy using some dark lighting and some white balance changes. Let's do the opposite and create a happy and nostalgic feeling. So when we add yellow, we think of the sun. The sun is yellow and when it shines on everything, it adds a yellow hue on everything. So when we use warm colors, we are recreating the feeling of a sunny day and joy as well. Purple adds a, adds a royal mood to your clip. So just by adding this, um, purple tint, I can make it look as if this character is actually, uh, she's really important and she holds a lot of power. If you look at the sunset, you notice a lot of purple tones in the sunset. So that feeling you get from looking at the sunset, you can recreate it here using purple and warm colors. We're going to learn about what each colors mean soon. 
but just by moving a few of these sliders, you can change the mood of your clip. Let's undo this. And look at some of the presets that we have. Let's go to some common ones. You can immediately make your video cold or warm. You can boost the colors with one click. This is a pretty neutral color grading. You don't really feel that much to it. You just get that sense of freshness because of all the um, intense and vibrant green that you see. We have shadow details. It's a bit more gloomy because we lost those vibrant colors and our clip is now a little darker. You can make it elegant. Just brighten everything up. Darken everything up, make it look like a sad film, or leave it, um, leave the colors way too saturated. Doesn't really look that good in our clip. But if you go in the 3D LUTs, you get some color grading from popular films like 007 series, Batman, Dark Films, Game of Thrones. Sparta 300, Star Wars, Walking Dead, Mission Impossible, Harry Potter, House of Cards, and many others. So you can just come over here, use these 3D LUTs to quickly change the mood and tone of your clip. Let's reset all, hit OK. You can also get more uh, color grading effects over here. And just go to, you have more LUTs here, as you can see, and double click to see a preview on your video. Okay, now let's learn more about each of the colors and see what they mean and how they affect your clip alone and combined with others. All right, so I got the sample colors right here just so uh, you know exactly what color I'm talking about. Let's start with the color red. So what does red mean? You've seen it in a lot of maybe Valentine commercials or in a lot of bold statements. So basically to sum it up, red is for intense emotions, whether this is for love, for power, for uh, maybe pride. You can use that color to intensify those emotions. You could just sum it up with intense emotions like passion, strength, love, anger. That's what red means. And like we said, it, it's a pretty common color. I'm sure you've seen red used a lot in commercials and in pictures. Let's move on to the next color, which is pink. Um, let's just use this one. Pink, when it's soft like this, I'm not talking about um, bold pinks, but this pink essentially means things that are innocent and soft. So it does also relate to love and romance, but in a more innocent way. It's not something like red where it's passionate and uh, anything related to childhood does have pink in it. Uh, if you look at Melanie Martinez, the singer, she uses the color pink, this soft pink, in her music videos a lot to create a sense of innocence in the emotions that are portrayed in her music videos. Let's take a look at this yellow. So yellow is knowledge. Uh, yellow is used a lot in educational organizations or videos. It is a really optimistic color. So it's a positive color. It shows hope. And uh, if you just think of yellow, you think of sunlight. So it's just a upbeat, positive color. But on the other hand, it could show bad things like jealousy. And in movies, when they want to show that the character is jealous, they do tend to use some yellow in their color grading. The next color is orange right here. Now, orange is a warm color. It could relate to just anything that has warmth in it. Like the example of a wedding. It's a warm moment. It's a good memory. And to make it a warm scene, you could add some orange to your color grading. 
It also shows balance and nostalgia. In a lot of indie films, they do tend to use orange, especially if they're making a movie about the past, about the 90s, and it does create a sense of nostalgia for the audience. Then we have green. I'm talking about this green right now. Now green is anything related to nature. So when you think of green, uh, you immediately think of the trees, the grass, the bushes, and it's just a healing and positive color. It shows a sense of freshness, but uh, when combined with darker colors, like dark green, we do get a creepy sense from it. So if you look at a plant and it's a vibrant green, you know that it's fresh, it's healthy, it's doing good. But when those greens start to fade away and the plant kind of withers around, it gets this really dark green color. And that's how you know that this plant is not in a good shape. So that's what green means. Let's take a look at blue right here. Blue creates a sense of calm and peace. We also learned that blue makes a scene sad, especially when it's a dark blue. I'm not talking about pastel blue, I'm talking about like a dark blue you get when it's a stormy day outside. So that dark blue could be used for sad and intense scenes, but when it's bright, it does create a sense of calm and unity. You do see blue in a lot of corporations because blue creates a sense of formality and unity. Let's look at the color purple, this purple. Purple is a royal color. So when you add it to onto something, you're creating importance for that character. Like we said, if I make, uh, if I add purple to my color grading in this video, I'm going to make it look as if this character uh, has a lot of power and when combined with either bright or dark colors I can make it look as if it's a good thing that she has that power or if it's not uh, I'm sure you guys remembered from Disney movies the villains would usually be purple So for example Ursula from the Little Mermaid or the queen the evil queen from Aurora or Sleeping Beauty they all had purple on their outfits or on their skin and that just shows that that not only are they uh, royalty but they also have a lot of power but if you notice it wasn't just purple they had black with them too so when those two colors are combined we are creating a sense of cruelty because those two characters were indeed cruel and mysterious then we have the color brown don't think we have a brown here. Let's just pretend this is brown. I'm talking about the dirt brown. Brown is earthy and it is used in outdoors a lot. So if there's like a scene where there's a construction, brown is used to intensify the colors that are already there. Brown can just show simplicity and uh, you can use it in your clips depending on the colors that you have. And then we have the color black, which shows a sense of look luxury and it makes every other emotion rich. So if we take green that we said is environmental and um, positive color, combine it with a little black to get a darker green, we make it a creepy color. So like we said in horror films, they use this dark green to create that mysterious and creepy mood. So black is used for um, luxurious things and mystery. It's a pretty formal color. And yeah. Then finally we have the color white right over here. Now white is for things that are pure and clean. It creates a sense of peace and uh, protection. But when you use white in your movies, in your scene, not your color grading, uh, you are not really creating an emotion. There's nothing there. If you think of a hospital without the people, the nurses, and the colorful signs, you don't feel anything towards that location because everything is white and you have no feelings towards it. Same thing goes for characters. If you've watched The Hunger Games, President Snow uh, always has the color white. 
we don't really get that sense of uh, evil from him because we get a lot of white and we can't really see through him. We don't know what he's thinking. All we get is that he's really ruthless and he is very cold. Now that's what each of the colors do and the mood that they create. But when you combine these colors, you get a different result. Let's get some uh, videos and try this out. I will go to effects. I'm going to use this video for now. Let's try our first combination, which is yellow and orange. So I'm going to go to um, come down here, try to find something warm. I'll go for this vibrant film and now it's warmer. So just by combining these two colors, although our video is a little dark, uh, I'm creating a sense of um, nostalgia, warmth, and happiness. So I could actually try this on something else. Because the character is faced uh, away from us, it is already mysterious. So let's try something else. Let me find another effect that is suitable. Let me just go in color correction. It will take some time to find the stuff I'm looking for and get warm. So what do you see in this color grading? We see some yellows and we see some orange. Combined, they create a warm mood, meaning that maybe she just woke up from a nice dream. The sun is out and this is a happy scene. So that is the first combination, yellow and orange. You could make it more intense, which does create the feeling that this room was a bit too hot in terms of temperature. And uh, if you watch Mad Max, this is a similar color grading. Let's look at our next color grading, which is, I'll use Batman for this. But the colors that we see here are green, black, because everything is a bit dark, and blue. All of these combined, it creates a kind of a creepy and um, serious mood, just like the color grading that was used in the movie Batman. There's nothing happy in that movie. Everything is sad. Everything is cruel. And therefore, this color grading really helps set the mood for it. Uh, then we have the colors red and green. I'm not sure if I can find something for that. But red and green essentially is for vintage films. Let's try this. It has some red. And I'll just add some green myself. Okay, something like this. Not exactly this, but uh, green and red. It makes the clip look more vintage. It's used in movies where the story is about the past. So it has a similar color grading. We have blue and purple. I guess something like this. Let's just add the purple ourselves. Uh, this color grading is an intense emotion. Let me just go for something like this. So this is a sad scene right now. It's as if there was a stormy day and she's just waking up from that storm. She couldn't sleep. Maybe she has a lot on her mind. Using blue and purple and dark colors, you can create that sad scene. And then we have black and white. Just remove the saturation and vibrance. So black and white, you're not really getting an emotion from this. It does create a sense of luxury. If you look at maybe famous brands out there, they do use black and white for their commercials to show the luxurious product that is being advertised and you can use black and white for it in other times when the black and white is intense meaning that the shadows are too dark and like the highlights are bright so everything is intense it is a sad scene we have mostly dark tones and this is just a sad scene brown and orange is another vintage combination that you can use I guess it would be something like this. It's another uh, way to create a sense of nostalgia for your video. Finally, we have pink and blue. Like we said, it creates a sense of innocence, the color pink. And blue creates a sense of unity. So if you've watched the Grand Budapest Hotel, the movie, 
uh, you know that they use a lot of blues and pinks and the scenes at times were innocent so the Grand Budapest Hotel is an example of the pink and blue color grading. Now that you know what the colors do and how they affect your clips, we can move on with the next lessons. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I will see you guys in the next one. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at Filmora's basic tools. I've divided the tools in the basics and the advanced. That way, you know which ones you need to master before moving on to the second set. The basic tools allow you to create the base work for you to just um, add on to it with advanced tools. So I'll get something from the stock media panel. You could use anything for this lesson. And we already learned about the basic stuff like the trash icon, the undo buttons, and the splitting uh, scissor icon. But we have the crop panel, which we still haven't learned. But as the name says, uh, it's just for you to resize your image or video. And uh, you get to choose the ratio right here. You can choose original, which is the ratio that your clip already has. But you could use other ones to just get a precise measurement. You could also get custom to get a more freehand selection. You can also get the dimensions down here and just use anything you want to resize your clip. Okay, once you're done, you can hit OK. But we also have this other option that is pan and zoom. And this is great because it allows you to start from one frame and then move into the next. So you can see start frame and then it ends here. So essentially what that means is that um, you have to hit OK first. This is my start frame and then it's slowly going to zoom in until this is our end frame. You can see the flash and how it's moving apart from the center. I will make this a little bigger. Let's get original ratio and then just work with the end. You have to select it first. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Go to the corner. Let's hit OK and see how this works. I'm going to render my clip first. So I rendered my clip. It is a bit long, but uh, let's just skip to the end. You can see how I went from the corner from the center and then I just go to one corner. Let's split our clip so we can actually see the effect. It may not be that visible because the scenery changes. Try that again. Do something like that. Let's zoom in even more. Hit OK. And now you can see we're zooming in. Let's first render our clip. And this is great if you're talking about something in your video and you want the attention to be on a certain item. Like right now, my uh, I want everyone to pay attention to this part. And that way I can just ask Filmora to zoom in onto the part that I'm talking about. So this was the end frame and this was the first frame. So we zoomed in to that one clip, that one part. Let's go back in here. We have some other options. These are some presets from far to near. So this is start. So this is far and then end it's closing in. So that's the near. We have from near to far, which is the opposite. It starts from the middle and then slowly pans out to the full screen. We have from left to right. Let's play that back. Then we have the opposite, right to left, goes the other way. And then we have uh, swap the start and end points. So if I have this and um, let me readjust start, this is my start, but I want it to be the opposite. Instead of moving these around, I can just hit this button and now they've switched places. So this is a handy tab if you want to one shift the attention of the audience on a certain part of the video. 
or if you just want a cinematic look on your clip and two, uh, if you want to just crop your footage and resize it. Hit OK. Um, let's try this. I'm going to try to make something cinematic. So I'll get right in the center. Pay attention to this guy. If the green is right on the plus, that means you are perfectly centered. But if the green thing is out, that means you're a little off. So let's hit OK. And now my clip is zooming out as it goes forward. OK, so that was the crop panel. If I want to make this cinematic and add some bars, go to effects and look for cinematic, cinematic. Um, we have some cinematic overlays. Just add that on top onto the clip and there we go we have these things if we double click go to effects you can adjust the opacity and just do what you like with it you can also add some um, frames if you like and yeah that's how you can get a cinematic uh, pan movement all right, so that was the crop panel. Um, we will be going over the basics. So let me get my clip back again. There we go. Get a small size. Just cut it off like that. So we will learn about the more advanced tabs like the speed, uh, advanced color tools, chroma key, duration, keyframing, uh, sorry, motion tracking and keyframing later. But uh, let's focus on the basics in this edit tab. So this is the editing options that you have for the footage. Depending on what type of footage you have, these may differ. So if it's a sticker from uh, Giphy, you may not get all of these options. But if it's a video or a um, photo, these stuff will be different. Let's get a photo and see what the difference is. Go to Unsplash and look at this photo. Add that onto my clip. If I double click or just hit this, you can see instead of video, we have image. We don't have any motion tracking because there is no motion. And we just don't have as many options as we do for video. Now, uh, if I double click on my video, you can see how many more options we have. We have motion tracking, which tracks the motion. We will learn more about this soon. We have stabilization, which uh, reduces the shake in your footage. Um, this footage was shot by a drone, so we don't really have that much. But we'll take a look at this soon. We have chroma key, which is where you have green screens or blue screens. And you get to get um, the model or the subject without getting any background. We have lens correction, which you can identify the lens that you use to take the shot. And it will just correct it in terms of distortion and um, the darkness around the edges. We have drop shadow, which adds shadow to the edges and auto enhance, which automatically fixes the colors and the tone of your video. So let's go ahead and take a look at these one by one. We have transform where you get to rotate. Let's undo, rotate, flip, either horizontally or vertically, where you can also scale in your clips or out. We have the X and Y position, position X, and position Y. So these were just things that you can use to move your clips. If you turn off this tab, you will turn off. Let's add some rotation. If I turn off this tab, I will not be getting any of these. Turn it back on and I will. Let's come down to the compositing tab. This is where you get to change the blending mode of your of the stuff that goes above another clip. If I change the blending mode right here, nothing is happening because I don't have anything underneath for this video to blend with. But if I take this image, put it on top of this video, let's resize it. 
I can use my transform tab to scale it out or use these guys. If I put a blending mode on this image, you can see it blends into what's underneath. So to use the compositing tab, you need to have something um, on top of another, another track for it to work. Like right here, this could be another video on top, an element, a sticker, any other sort of media. And yeah, you get to blend your footages in together. We have, uh, let's go back to normal. We have the opacity tab. You get to change the opacity. Let's come down here. And that's just how you can blend things in using the compositing tab. But like we said, you need more than one footage. You need another one too. All right, that's the compositing tab. Every uh, option has this check mark. If you uncheck it, it's not going to be there. If you check it, it will be there. Motion tracking allows you to take one point and have Filmora track that motion. So if you want to attach uh, an element to a moving subject, like we could have someone running here, I can track that running person and then attach a fire animation to him. It's a really cool feature. Uh, we will learn about this soon. It's a bit um, a bit advanced. You need to practice with it. So we won't be getting into this right now. We have stabilization. Like we said, if you have a shaky footage, you can use this to mirror the edges and get a rather smoother clip. It does not always work, but it's pretty helpful. Let me get a shaky footage. So I just imported a footage that is a little shaky. The camera is following the football players. And we are going to use stabilization to fix the extra motion that is causing the video to look a little, a little odd. There we go. Let's bring that into the timeline. Delete that. And as you can see, this video is pretty shaky. I'm going to cut the parts where he's not moving. Let's get rid of that. And this one. So this is the video. You can see it's just soccer players. It's a little shaky. It's not that bad, but we can still use stabilization to fix it up a bit. Double click, go to stabilization. So turn it on and you want to hit analyze. Filmora will go through each of the movements and then you will have the option to change the smoothness or the edge processing. Like we said, it may not work for every video. It depends on the amount of shake that the video has and the edges of your clip. So I'm going to let this analyze and then we'll be back to see how it looks. Okay, it finished analyzing. And if I uh, skip through, you can see that the edges are mirrored. So we have reflect on, but this is what stabilization means. It's going to attempt to make your video less shaky. Let's have a look at smooth level. Uh, by default, it's 10. You can add to that. It's going to smooth things out. The uh, smooth the video. So if you add to that, it will just zoom in until you're not seeing those shaky edges. But uh, that may not work so well because you're getting rid of most of the video. And if it's on zero, you're just getting the full clip. And then we have edge processing. Just set this back to 10. Let's go somewhere where we can see the edge right here. Right now it's on reflect. As you can see, it's like a mirror up there. But we have um, tiles, which just gets the bottom. And we have extend, which stretches out the edge of the video. We also have none, and it will just be black. So to smooth out your clips, I recommend reflect, but also add to your smooth level if it's possible with the clip that you have. But generally, it will just get rid of any excess motion. And shake, make sure you go through your clip and you don't get things like that. I'm going to add to the smooth level. There we go. Let's hit OK. 
render and see what it looks like. There we go. Let's have a look. You can see that the shake is because of our resolution. Let's turn it back to full. So you can see Filmora attempted to stabilize this footage, but it did not work on this one because it didn't really have that much shake to begin with. Let's have a look. You can see that the video is pretty stable. Um, I'm assuming they used a gimbal for this, but it really does depend on your clip. If you have a handheld shot, um, there will obviously be more shake compared to this video. And those shakes are, uh, can be detected in an easier way compared to the shakes in this video. So if you do have a handheld shot, you could totally go for this stabilization feature. It will work way better. And all right, we went over most of the basic tools that Filmora has to offer. In the next lesson, we're going to look at the rest. These basic tools are things that you will end up using first before adding onto them with the advanced tools. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I will see you in the second part of Filmora's basic tools. Hey there. Congratulations on completing this free two hour Filmora Essentials course. It's a pretty great achievement and I hope that you have enjoyed it. You are now ready to get started on creating some cool videos. If you would like to uncover all the hidden tricks and know more tips on video editing and working with Filmora, go to skillademia.com. The beginner to advanced course consists of many more hours of exercises and demos, which will turn you into a pro in no time. You'll be able to learn more about the tools and features of the program and secrets behind editing, as well as apply your knowledge together with the instructor on many awesome projects. If this sounds like something you want, go check it out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.